greetings from Jim Riley here in Rutland, Vermont. And I'm getting ready to go out for another hike. I thought I'd bring up some things that I haven't seen other people bring up. And maybe it's just me. But I don't think people shine their boots anymore, their shoes. Uh, a lot of times this is because, of course, we're using cloth shoes or uh, whatever, you know, synthetic material uh, for our hiking shoes or hiking boots. But when I was in the military, it was very important for us to take care of our boots. And that wasn't just because of spit and shine and make everything look nice. No, it was because it helps uh, improve the condition of the boots to be able to be more waterproof and to last longer. And also, it makes you look spiffy and nice. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> I just thought I'd show you what I do real quick. As part of my uh, hiking shoe or hiking boot uh, maintenance. Okay? Okay, so just really quick. Um, I use Kiwi products and Shape Up to shine my boots. And some cotton balls. As well as a uh, brush to brush uh, the shoes and, and make them look shiny. And uh, once you do that, you'll find that your boots look better. Uh, last longer and are more resilient to dirt and water and whatever other else you might be standing in uh, or hiking through. Um, actually, those are Dr. Comfort uh, hiking boots and, and they're kind of diabetic shoes. Um, so if you're a diabetic, you can still hike. And I think it's a good idea because you know we're supposed to get exercise, a great deal of exercise and watch our diets. But it's easier if you exercise, because then you still have to watch your diet, but not as much. So, you know, exercise really helps you and helps you with your health. And I am a diabetic. So this is one of my reasons why I walk so much, hike so much, and just love to go outdoors. So today it's only gonna be about 30 degrees. So it's getting a little bit chilly, and it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Anyway, uh, my birthday's coming up pretty soon, uh, in about a week. So I will be an even older old man, Jim. <laughs> so hey, if you're tired of being cooped up like I am right now, let's go out there. Let's get some walking in, okay? And I make coffee with my Mr. Coffee coffee maker. I rinse out my dad's old thermos with hot water. So while the thermos is basically getting heated up, and I really like to keep it warm, that way the coffee will stay hot inside of it. But in the pot of coffee, I like to add some half and half that makes the coffee very creamy and some domino sugar <laughs> I don't know why I picked this brand but I think this is probably the most popular brand of sugar and it's good stuff I like my coffee to be have the caffeine and the sugar kicking it to keep me going while I'm out there and it is a cold day out there, like I said earlier. It's going to be about 30 degrees for our high. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the water that's been preheating my thermos and pour it all out in the sink. And I don't know if you could see it, but there's still some steam coming out, so it was pretty warm. But now, just to make sure we've got it hot, I'm going to take some boiling water and pour it in the thermos. It's literally boiling. Might need two pots. These are small pots. But there we go. We've got it pretty much filled up. This is a big thermos. Remember, it was my dad's back in the day when our moms and dads, they didn't goof around about coffee. They made sure they had a lot of it, and they had it hot, and they had it ready. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and pour out the boiling hot. So now I'm pretty sure you can see the steam. Okay, so the boiling hot water is out of there and the thermos has been activated. The coffee has already has the cream and the sugar in there. And so then I'm going to go ahead and just pour that into the thermos. Nice and hot. Steaming hot. So there we go. We've real oh, we've got it really full right now, all the way to the brim. Which means we're gonna waste a little bit of it. Now the coffee that's left over, I'm gonna have a cup before I go out there. Warm my old bones up. Okay, so let's get started. You're already out here? And look at this, we've got a real Vermont winter. We've actually got some snow falling. How cool is that? This is where Grove Street turns into Merchant's Row in what amounts to kind of uh, downtown Rutland. So here we are, and we're literally leaving uh, downtown or what passes for downtown in Rutland uh, behind. This is the train station behind me, the Amtrak train station. You could take a train from here to New York and rumor is, and rumor has been for about the past 10 years, that one day we'll be able to take a train all the way to Burlington. But not now. Here we are and we are in the middle of a snowstorm here in Rutland, Vermont, heading towards West Rutland. You're keeping me honest and keeping my burrell up. Thank you very much. Tell me this isn't like a Courier and Ives kind of uh, Christmas scene. I think this is just beautiful. This is like a winter wonderland. Well, sometimes you just have to say it when your wife has a good idea. And this was Christina's idea so that we could have some light out here when it starts to get dark. There we go. Now you see, we got some light in case it goes dark. And this is really great because I'm out here a lot of times have a hard time getting a very early start. You know, I teach in the morning in China online and then you know, by the time you have breakfast, by the time you get things ready, like my coffee and things, well, pretty soon it's one, two o'clock in the afternoon. So this was a great idea. Thank you, Christina. A little more of the winter wonderland, but what's sad is all the signs that used to say St. Joseph College are gone. And now apparently uh, Heritage Credit Union owns this land and they're going to turn this into some kind of family housing. Which is good that, you know, somebody will be able to use the facilities, but it's kind of bad that, you know, we've lost another college here in Rutland, Vermont. And it really is beginning to look a lot like Christmas isn't it? Christmas in New England, huh? What could be better? Look at these houses. Are these not nice decorations for Christmas? Okay, so as we hike here, this is what we're seeing. Does this look cool or what? Or could this be the beginning of an American horror story? Oh my. Okay, now I'm pretty sure I am in West Rutland. So I don't know how long my battery is going to last or my video uh, space. And uh, oh my gosh, the mail carrier is here with some mail. Such a deal. Talk about having some late night overtime. Now tell me this isn't cool. It's just a simple little house. 
But what a beautiful Christmas decoration spread, huh? Whoa, and check this out. It continues and it goes on and on. And even the garage or barn is decorated. Isn't that beautiful? I know, I know, this is supposed to be my training video, but as I'm walking out of here and it's nighttime, it's just so beautiful. And we were just in Rutland town, by the way. Now we're in Rutland city again. Well, here I am back in Rutland and um, getting ready to go home. I'm almost there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed our little training and our Christmas spectacular with all those lights. And um, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Good training, thank you for joining me. Catch you next time, bye now.